Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com and sitting before you is the transmission out of our 2016 Yamaha YXZ1000R. In today's big project, we're going to break it all the way down and install what they call a gear reduction kit. We're actually going to be installing a GYTR gear reduction kit. Now this is actually produced by Yamaha and it is their answer for machines that are really involved in tight trails and that's what we have over here on the East Coast. So you need to pay close attention as I break this down and more importantly any special tools that I use as I put it back together. You're really going to need those to be successful on this project. So if you're ready, let me go open up my toolbox and we will dive into this. Let's go ahead and dive into it and see what kind of shape the clutch is actually in. This is going to be interesting. Now all the bolts, they're going to be the same length and head size, which is 8 millimeters. Ah, now take note of that. This particular location actually has a copper washer on the bolt. Let's mark any of those so we don't miss that when we're putting it back together. Yep, yeah, there's another one. And another. That's all. We're going to mark those three. Let's see if we can get it to knock apart now. There we go. Satisfying sound. <laughs> well, guys, this one already had a recluse clutch installed on it. So the question is, what went wrong? Because she would not engage or move under its own power. So this is going to turn into a, a murder mystery now. Let's finish pulling it down and see what all went wrong in there. Now all of these are going to be tins. Whenever I'm pulling one of these apart, or any engine for that matter, I usually pull them out as they come out. That way I've got a better idea how they go back together. However, if yours get jumbled up, then that will be a great time to go to our exploded parts diagrams, and that will give you an exact picture of how it should go back together. But honestly, I don't want to follow anything that somebody else has done because they probably didn't do it right. The basket actually looks okay. I mean, I can see some jutter marks on the inner basket, but we're replacing all that anyway. It's mainly the nice color of blue that everything is. I, I just expected to see more of the fiber plates worn away. Because, I mean, she would not move. Makes me wonder if something is cut loose inside of the transmission. Transmission actually feels okay, so this may have all been due to an improper installation of a recluse clutch kit, potentially. Now we were talking about special tools earlier, and to pull this apart, if you've got an air impact or a large impact, you can actually run that bolt off, and you wouldn't need this to hold the, uh, the center clutch part. But when you go to put it back together, you will need one of these because that is set at a very specific torque value and you can't really do that with an impact. So just keep in mind, you will need this when it comes time to put it back together. Nasty, nasty, nasty. So we've got the clutch out of the way, but the real meat of this video is going to be to do the gear reduction kit. And when I go to put the clutch back together, 
we're going to actually upgrade it to a GYTR, considering the machine wouldn't even move under its own power. But if you need detailed instructions on that, why don't you reference that video and I can walk you through it. But for right now, it's all going to go down to the lower shelf. So let's start over on our primary drive universal joint and get it taken apart. And to get to it, we need to go ahead and move that upper cover. Let's start by getting our clips out. There we go. I think the trick is to break them loose. Let's see if we can get it to drift out. There she goes. The Yamaha manual wants you to carry it over to a press and press it out. I don't think so. There you go. Not super clean, but it got done. Next, let's go ahead and remove the coupling gear down low. There's actually a 22 millimeter up inside. All right, let's go ahead and get our shift shaft removed. Go ahead and get the arm off of it, then we can pull it back through. Just marking it where it was so we can get it back in the same place when the time comes. Got a circlip and just a washer. Let's see if we can pull that off as an assembly without making too much of a mess. Let's go ahead and get that detent out of there as well. Try to do this with the spring still up there. There we go. Gotcha. Okay. Before we split the cases, let's go and remove this output. Let's spin it around, and now let's go ahead and separate the cases. Yeah, somebody's been in here. Somebody's been in this one. See the heads? It's been opened up before. are going to be all the same length. Nope, oh, longer. This is more where we started. Oh, two long ones. Oh, there's two more on the inside. See if she wants to open up now. I, I really thought it would have released by now. <sighs> there we 
There it goes. Yeah. One split transmission case. had a fair amount of debris flying around in it. That was not supposed to be uh, circulating through the transmission. <laughs> a lot of cleaning going to be involved even though we are replacing this half of the case. This one gets reused. We'll go ahead and finish breaking this one apart. Get all the little pieces out of it. Leave them on this table. And then we'll start pressing in the new bearings, the new case half. Start putting it back together with the uh, different gears. Got to get the uh, shift detent released in the spring. Then we'll get that circlip off. Then we'll be able to remove the shift drum. Plastic gear removed in the housing. Then we're going to have to use the impact on this. Pick out the right bit. When you're doing this, make sure that it doesn't rock around. Otherwise, we'd strip it. That's what we're after. Let's see if we can get it to pop loose now. There we go. So I was about to strip that one. It's getting close. Yeah, whoever put it together did not use any Loctite, but I probably will. Not the red, just the blue would be fine. There. So I didn't need to pull that one, but that's all right. Let's see if we can wiggle these dowels out without damaging them. Then we can lay it face down after we get the dowels out. Then we'll remove all the sensors and brackets on the other side. Eights, twelves, five. We'll do the eights first. I don't know why these bolts are there. My guess is that they had to drill through and then this is their way of sealing up the case, plugging it, because each one of these has a uh, copper washer on it. So it's not holding anything, it's just plugging it up. So yeah, they were probably having to drill these different passageways. So that would make sense. What was this? Oh, gear position switch. Maybe a speed sensor? Yep, it's a hall effect. Another plug, so to speak. 14. Neutral switch, maybe? Or maybe it's reverse switch. Well, okay, kids. I believe we have extracted everything we need to get out of the old case. So now I'm going to bring over an, another bench, a clean one, with the new casing. And then we're going to start assembling it. Step number one, well, we need to press in the new bearings. And I've got the bearings laid out where they're going to be going in. Now you want to keep in mind that there are two that are the same diameter. The difference is one has a sealed side and you want to make sure that that goes in this location as well as this one, which goes here. So let's get over to the press and start driving these in. We'll start with the biggest one first and then work our way toward the smaller ones. I should 
do it. All right, this is the other one where the seal needs to be facing out. One left up here. We need to get something below it to support it. Hey, if things start to go off balance like this is happening, you may have to just finish it out over on a uh, flat surface like I've got. So let's get this thing finished. Yeah, we're still good. Woof. I like using the press but sometimes when it's that wobbly and not enough surface area to get a, a flat perpendicular surface. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Next, let's go ahead and press in a couple of seals. And all we're going to use is just a socket that best fits to just on the inside of the uh, diameter of each one. Not going to be that tough. They're not that big. They'll push in pretty easy. Shoot, this one, I don't even need a socket to push in. Use my thumb. On to the next. A little bit more effort on that one. We'll finish it up with a socket. That one too. This one goes a little bit below the edge like I've got it. And the other one is about even. That will do. While we're thinking about it, we're going to take a little bit of grease, not a lot, and just put it to the inside of each one of these seals. Then we're also going to go ahead and pre-lube the bearings with a little bit of transmission oil. We could wait to do this, but we just installed them. It's fresh in my mind. Well, let's go ahead because this is something we do not want to miss. Now we want to be careful with this, not make a big mess out of it, because it's important that the case halves be completely dry when we go to put them together with the Yamabond. All of that feels good. Let's continue. Tell you what, let's go ahead and bring this up. It's just a container we're going to use to hopefully yeah. Hold this in place, then we'll bring over the cluster and then lay everything in with a shift drum, the shift forks, etc. etc. So we'll slide that to the side a little bit, make some room, and start getting these new gears on. So let's start with the drive axle, and we're going to be swapping out the first gear along with the middle drive gear, if memory serves. First thing we need to do is remove the snap ring, but pay attention to which direction it's going because it actually has a sharper edge on one side versus the other because of the way it's manufactured, way, the way it's stamped. And we want that sharper edge, if that's the way they put it together, and I bet it was, facing out toward the pressure. So we're going to make a quick mark on it just to make sure we put it back in the same orientation as it came out. Almost. There we go. Interesting how these lock together. That'll lift straight off. And then this will turn and then pull up. When you're doing this, go ahead and inspect the other gears shaft everything because now would be the time to replace anything that's really worn down i can see that this one has some wear on it but i think we're good to go so we're going to go ahead and go back together get that in place turn it a half a tooth now this should line back up and hold it all in place there's actually one of these little keepers that's a little bit wider than the other, and that only goes in one place, and that is over here. See, locks it in. Kind of cool, huh? Now, there's a chamfered side and then a flat side. You want the flat side going in. Let's get our circlet back in. There's a little bit of paint that I put on it, so this side is facing out. There she is. Satisfying little snap sound. Okay, 
So she is going to be ready to go. Next, let's do the main, and we're going after the first pinion gear on this one, which is right there. Same scenario with the, the clip that's holding it, as far as getting it back in the same orientation. Everything's getting slippery. Gotcha. Oops, took out that keeper with us. Let's get it back into position. There she is. Next, we're going after the middle driven shaft, and the middle driven gear. And as you can see, it has this large spring below it. Guess what? That has to be compressed to get out these two keepers. Uh, imagine this is the top of your, your valve, and those are the keepers holding it in. Just really enlarged for this particular application. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna have to use the press, and of course Yamaha makes this adjustable tool that basically makes a U over the top of it where you press down. Well, that tool is actually no longer available, so here's my solution. I took a inch and a half piece of EMT, basically slashed it off, and then cupped it out, and what we're gonna do is carry it over to the vise, use this gear to let it ride on at the bottom, and then we're gonna use the top of the press, and then our special tool right here, press it down just far enough to lift out those two keepers. There's one. And two. That is not something you do by hand. No way. Don't forget this little washer. Swap out the gear. Get our washer in place. And our special tool. I told you this was an inch and a half, which it is, but it probably would have been better to go with a two inch because this is actually less than 180 degrees. It would be better if it actually came out to here. A little bit more to push into instead of less than half, which is what I'm doing. There it is. Let's take it back over, start putting this thing together. All right guys, I was just doing a test fit, doing a test run before I actually went through and did the, uh, the final installation. Started checking my parts diagrams because I know somebody has been into this thing before just for the condition of the bolts on the outside and the excessive amount of Yamabon that was on the case halves. And guess what? We're actually missing a washer on the back side of our reverse idler gear. And I would have not have realized that had I not been comparing what I was installing with what's on our exploded parts diagram. That's where it came up. And sure enough, it was not in there. We actually went and reviewed the tape and when we took it apart. That washer wasn't there, but we knew somebody had been inside this transmission already. So once again, if somebody's been working on your machine, wasn't you, Look at those diagrams, check it part by part because, hey, if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. So I'm going to make a quick run over to the Partzilla part shelves, get this washer, come back, and we're going to put this thing together. So here's our missing washer. We've got it in place now. What I'm going to do at this particular moment in time is pause on all the internals of the, uh, the transmission transfer case and we're gonna shift over to the other half of the case and finish getting it cleaned up because there's still a fair amount of gasket material on there and plus I want to go ahead and put in new seals. I mean, you just don't go this far into one and not replace that seal. That's just, well, at least that's not the way I operate. So we're gonna continue getting this gasket scraped off 
and whatever you're using, whether it be a razor blade or some type of scraper like I'm doing, just be very careful with it because you don't want to dig into it. So just be gentle and just rub off just a little bit at a time and that'll minimize the chance of causing a gouge, which is gonna make it leak. Also, I wanna caution you, I know I've seen a lot of people use those Brillo type Scotch-Brite pads on the end of a drill, or worse than that, a high-speed Dremel type application, and it'll go way too deep. And it, sure, it'll look fine, but if you put a straight edge across there, Guess what? You just created a channel. I'm going to try to do this by keeping the dowels in. These are pretty thin walled ones. I'm afraid if I grabbed them with a pair of pliers, it would crimp them down and deform them. Now I've got a paper towel there, or shop towel, to catch any of the debris because, well, this one still has bearings in it and we don't want to get any of this material in the bearings. Like it never happened. Getting ready to put the cases back together, but before I do that, I need to replace these seals. Now the question is, what's the best way to pull these seals out? I mean, everybody has used screwdrivers or hook tools or you know, whatever it may be laying around the shop, but wouldn't it be nice if you had the right tool to make it easy to pull those out and not damage the cases? Well, Motion Pro has a tool just for that, and it's made for the power sports industry, and it's aimed toward the seals that you're most commonly going to find on a motorcycle or side-by-side -side or ATV. So we're just going to swap out that headpiece. Now, go for this one down here. Popped it right out. Now let's get our top one up here. Now let's go ahead and get our seals pressed in and we're just gonna use a regular bearing driver to do this. You just wanna make sure that the outside of the driver gets as close to the outside edge as possible. So we'll start with this one up top first. Basically, we're just gonna run this in until it's at the lower edge of this little chamfer right here. Now it shouldn't be that hard to knock in, so don't hit it too hard, otherwise you're gonna push it too far down in there. Good idea may be to have your driver a little bit off side like this to where it'll stop on the casing, get it centered around, and then we'll tap it a little bit further down to sink it in. That actually is looking pretty good right there. So we're gonna call that good. It is just below that edge, and that's what I was after. This one actually has a lip that sticks up a little bit above it, and it was actually pressing against that lip, and that allowed it to go down the correct amount. So, let's move on. That one we're gonna leave flush. So we're good to go. Now let's go ahead and get some grease packed in around the seals. Otherwise, if I forget to do it later, it's gonna make them wear out too quick. So we've got the transmission in. Let's go ahead and get in the shift forks, get those engaged, make sure that the LR for this set is facing up. Just C is over on this side and this on this shaft. Make sure it is facing up as well. And what we're gonna do is Go ahead and engage them into the, the gears. But we're gonna lay them off to the side. And then, make sure C's up. Then we're gonna lay in our shift drum. If we face this area, this direction, that is, should be neutral. So now we're gonna bring up the shift forks and engage them into the grooves of the shift drum itself in that position or that orientation rather. And these two have to get lifted a pretty good bit. 
and then push them into the grooves. Now, shaft in, mm -hmm. and there's neutral. So, we've got that ready to go. Let's go ahead and get our oil pump. Now, let's go ahead and get in the reverse shift shaft. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and take it out of this bucket for a moment carefully, because remember, all this is just laying in there at the moment. Put you off to the side. Got a little bit more weight than when we started. So we've got that held in, so we just have a washer and then our circlip. Fingernails aren't quite strong enough to do that. That got it. We can leave the arm off for right now, otherwise there's, we run the risk of bending it. Let's bring our bucket back over and get ready after we put in the oil pump. Seal this thing back up. So let's go ahead and get our oil pump installed. And it only goes in one way. This is not mandatory makes me feel better to use a little bit of thread locker on the inside, any bolts inside. Let's go and get a little bit of oil on this bearing before we put in that primary drive assembly. Be careful here so we don't damage the, that plastic oil gear. sitting up that high, doesn't it? All right, we're getting ready to close it up here. Before we do, I want to put a little bit more oil on all these different moving parts. It is time to get these cases together. We're going to be using some 3-Bond 1215. You don't have to get carried away with this. You just want to put a light coat all the way around this edge. But keep it away from the oil galleys. We don't want anything to do with those. It's a nice, even coat. That is looking pretty good. I think... We are good to go. All right, let's go lay it in place. That's the way we like it to go together. Didn't have to tap anything, she just sat right down. So, looking good so far. Just need to get all of these bolts in and then we're gonna go around, snug them down to begin with. Then we're gonna actually torque each one to 7.2. I usually go on out to eight just to make sure. All right, and our two hidden ones. Since they're only inside of the case, put a little bit of red Loctite on them. Let's go ahead and bring our shift shaft through. Let's go ahead and grease these two points. Make sure that washer is in place. All right. I'll get this little detent in place. Definitely put some red Loctite on this guy. Now we just need to wrangle the spring in here without dropping it. Piece of cake. All right, now we're going to lift it back out and get our retaining clip on the other side. All right, washer in place, then our retaining clip. Okay. I think we're good to go. 
when you're rolling it around, be careful not to damage the threads or any of the protruding shafts. We have a couple of breathers we need to push in carefully. Looks like the depth is the same distance in between that ledge and this one compared to the old one. That should do. Let's go ahead and get our strainer in while we're thinking about it. There should be an O-ring. Yep, there is. You'll notice this has a groove that it's supposed to go in, so we want to put this in as an assembly. There's my other breather. Same depth. All right, guys, we're pretty much done with the transmission as far as the uh, gear reduction kit goes. The only thing we have left is to go ahead and plug up all these little passages that they had to make to drill through the different parts of the housing. And with that, they send all the necessary copper washers so you make sure you get a good seal. Then we'll also go ahead and put on that torque limiting housing that goes on this side. The gasket comes with it. And then we've got a couple of sensors and gear position sensors and neutral sensors that we need to get in place. Let's start off by getting the gasket on for the torque limiting gear output. What a contrast in between nice Georgia clay and a new casing. <laughs> It'll be okay. Because guess what? When I finish this thing up, that's exactly where I'm going to take it. Because, <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be prudent for me not to test it properly. Right, there's a couple of black ones. There. Get those in the right location by those little arrows there. Get these pulled down. You can kind of do it in a crisscross manner. And then we'll come back and torque them to 7.2 foot-pounds. Now, since it's already tilted over on its side, let's go ahead and take care of the gear position switch. And it has a new O-ring that we've installed on it. Just make sure you line up this little D with the end of the shaft. Put a little bit of blue Loctite on each one. And then it is a four millimeter Allen that holds them in place. Dipstick with a new O-ring. Now before you install the speed sensor, you make sure that you choose the correct spacer depending on which case you have. And if you've got a B5J, you would want to use the yellow. Now if you have a 2HC, which we do, right here, you're going to want to use the blue. Of course they also send a longer bolt that you're going to need, but that's with the kit once again. We're going to take the O-ring off. Get our spacer on. When you're doing this, make sure the O ring gets down into that groove. All right. Now, lock tight. Get on our bracket for our reversing cable. Just a couple of 12 millimeters. Let's get our spring on. It goes like this. 
Now I think it's safe to say we can go ahead and get that reverse arm back on there. I am going to put a bit of Loctite on the end of that bolt. Let's do the neutral sensor. And that goes up here. Now you typically want to put this on first. The reason being it's the same thread as all these plugs. So it's kind of easy to put it in the wrong place. Go ahead and mark where it's supposed to go and get it in there. Let's go ahead and get all these plugs back in and start off with these two eight millimeter head bolts slash plugs. Now we've got five plugs to put in and they're all going to be 12 millimeter heads. And our drain bolt. And before we call it a day, let's go ahead and get our shift arm on it. There's a mark on the end that you can line that up with. But I also have a mark up top. Well, all right, guys, that's going to wrap up this particular video, but it certainly does not finish this entire project. We're going to dive into doing the clutch system on this next. It's going to be pretty interesting as we're using the GYTR setup. Now, if you'd like to see me do that, why don't you look at this particular unit's playlist, and that way I can walk you through that process. Well, listen, if you need these parts or any other parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com, and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments thus far, why don't you leave those in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, you like what you see? Why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can be notified and see whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Parkzilla and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.